Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you not just one but two ways to prepare some semi-solid creams. What am I talking about here? These are the types of creams that are semi-solid. One of the great things about these products is you can travel with them, they're not going to leak but they also melt onto the skin instantly on application. Now before I get started with these formulas, and I've created two very different formulation types for you today, so you can pick and choose as you prefer, but if you are picking the first one in particular which contains no actual water, please be careful with any water-free marketing story you tell your consumer, because while this formula doesn't contain water, the manufacturing steps to produce the materials that go into this product did use a lot of water. So while it is true it's water free, your consumer would then think that you've been conserving water not only with the formula but with the entire process and that's simply not true. We are becoming an ever increasingly concerned society about water use but we need to be careful in how we market this to consumers. So let me show you how to create two different types of products and I'm going to talk you through some of the key materials I've used in each formula so that you can get a real idea about which formula you might want to create and the types of materials you need to use to create these product forms. For the first product I'm going to be creating this semi-solid oil cream. Now this particular product contains 42% of very light skin fill lipids but it also contains a very very high input of glycerin and this means that it is extremely moisturizing for the skin. It's balm like in the amount of moisture and moisture protection it provides but it has a very light skin feel so it feels like a moisturizer even though its delivery is very much like a balm. So this is something that's great for extreme hydration. This is also technically water free because there's a very small water portion but I've used rose water in place of the water. So again you need to be careful about that marketing story, we don't want to mislead consumers but I have made it to be free of actual water in its development. The other great thing about this particular product form is you can also dilute it. So this is a very concentrated balm and like I say when it's rubbed in uh, it becomes very very soft but dry feeling on the skin but we can also add a little bit of water to it and then it will spread a really long way so we can turn a balm into a body lotion easily and then it applies very readily as well. So I've already prepared my phases here so I've got my phase A materials again you can see it's just rose water with some glycerin and I have the anionic surfactant in here. It's a very powerful anionic surfactant that enables me to stabilize this formula with only a very small portion. In this beaker I have my phase B materials. Now in here I have non-ionic emulsifiers, they're going to help build that body. I also have a lot of very light skin for emollient. In this formula I've used Lexfeel Natural. Uh, these are quite readily available materials in this formula and it is all natural materials I've used in this formula as well to really boost that marketing message. So I'm just going to heat these up. Now these do need to be heated until they're melted and then they'll be combined. While they're heating I'm going to show you the second product. Now this one here again is that real semi-solid cream like product but this one actually does have a very high water content. Now in this product I have 10% of light skin fill lipids again. I've used some good emulsifiers to help stabilize it but one of the key materials in here is an active called Boactive. I've also got some niacinamide in here because it can tolerate the heat required. And in these beakers I have the phase A and B again pre-prepared. So I'm going to heat those up as well. Now this is the first product, the one that contains the high proportion of glycerin and oils. 
and we need to be careful that we don't introduce too much air into this product. So in a larger batch, very easy to achieve. In a smaller batch, be careful not to introduce too much air during mixing. Now it's really careful that you mix the phases really well. And then you need to make sure they're thoroughly mixed and you'll need to pour this off while the product is still warm, otherwise you won't get a nice smooth finish in your packaging. One of the things you need to be careful with in this formula, you use a lot of non-ionic emulsifiers to help build body and structure to the product. You need to make sure you also use a heat tolerant preservative because it needs to be added while the product is still quite hot. And that's actually in this product already during the heating step. You'll notice I'm keeping the stirrer well below the surface of the product to make sure that we don't introduce too much air. Now this is product two, and this is the one that contains uh, quite a high quantity of water, around 82%, and I'm just adding phase B now. One of the reasons I'm showing you this particular formula is because it's so simple to create using materials you can readily get, but it creates a product containing two extremely good actives. The bow active material that actually helps solidify the finished product is actually great at minimizing pores and also reduces the appearance of age spots. Uh, and lightening age spots can be very difficult to do. So there's some fantastic efficacy data on this material, the bow active, to lighten age spots. Uh, it's also a general anti-aging type product um, from the age of 30 onwards. It's also got the niacinamide, which can tolerate the high temperatures as well as a preservative that can also tolerate the high temperatures. And again, it creates the semi-solid cream concept that consumers are looking for, especially if they travel a lot, or just if they're looking for a very high performing product and very simple ingredients used to create a very high performance product. Again, because it will set into a semi-solid form, you do need to pack it off while it's still reasonably hot so that you get a smooth appearance on the top of the packaging. So here's our products here. You can see while still molten, still able to be poured off quite easily. And this is the day that we make them. You need to use heat tolerant materials, especially that preservative. And in product, uh, the second product's case, I've used actives that are also heat tolerant. So we've got a fantastic marketing story. This product here, of course, I've used very light skin emollients. You can mix it with water, spread it over a large area or have an intensive balm. You can use some rose water in place of water. Uh, you can also use some butters in place of some of the lipid content, but we don't want to have a greasy residue finish. So here's the product the day they're made. You can see easy to pour and pack off while still hot. And here's the finished product, how they'll appear tomorrow. That convenient semi-solid form that some consumers are now looking for. Well, there you have it. Two very simple ways to construct these semi-solid creams. A very natural option that you could build some other materials into. The key emulsifiers there help build the product form and functionality, so don't swap them out if you can help it. And product B, a very simple formula to construct with some great actives for a fantastic marketing story from very simple and readily available materials. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and now it's time for you to get creative. Happy formulating.